All right, guys, it is April 25th. Yesterday was my wife's and my 25th anniversary. Yeah, that seems like, um, seems like a long time. Probably longer for her than for me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not uncommon that you hear about marriages lasting that long or longer. It's also not uncommon to hear about them not enduring nearly that long. So it's not to my credit that it has lasted this long, perhaps. Um, there's a lot of factors that come into play, I guess, into making a marriage last long. And it's not always as pretty and as romantic as what, as what some people try to report. It's not all the things that we did right. There's a lot of things that were done wrong. You know, but at last, here we are, still trotting on, and that's that. Anyway, so a week prior to yesterday, we heard that there was a survivor watch party at a brewery in Bartow, which is only like five, ten minutes away from us. And we've been there a couple times, and I love Survivor. So when I heard there was going to be a Survivor watch party, I was like, count me in. And Ethan Zahn was going to be there. He is the winner of, of Season 3 when they were in Africa. He, was, he, was, he used to be a soccer player, you know. He had a, can, a battle with cancer and all that. And really good guy. He was my favorite on that season, and I'm glad he won. But I've followed him on social media for years, so I was like pretty excited to get to see Ethan. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, that was going to be a pretty neat deal. And so we went, and I got to see him. I got to talk to him. I got to ask him some questions. That was a real joy. And besides him, there were two other Survivor, uh, previous Survivor cast members. One was uh, Carl. Uh, he's also called Doc. He was also on on season three with Ethan. He didn't last very long, but he he was there at the watch party. And then Janet from season thirty nine. I think she was the first woman to spear a fish on Survivor, and uh, it was really neat. I mean, it was really neat to see these familiar faces, uh, people that you kind of rooted for, you know. Well, Ethan certainly. Um, so, you know, he's he's kind of an icon of Survivor itself. And then, we, of course, we, you know, everybody there watched that night's episode of Survivor. And he got to talk, they got to talk in between, you know, um, you know, in, in during the commercials. And I got to take a picture of me with them and the actual torches that they used in Survivor, their torches. The picture didn't turn out too good. But, um, yeah, nevertheless, it was taken. And I got another picture with Ethan. That was pretty cool. Great guy, really nice guy. You know, he seems like the real deal. Nothing, that didn't seem like there's any false pretenses about him. Just a cool guy, really cool guy. And so was, so was Janet and Carl. I got, to talk to, I got to talk to all of them, really. And so I had a lot of fun doing that. And I asked Ethan, I said, if you were to if you were to go back on Survivor now, because he actually did end up going back on All Stars and didn't last very long on there. Uh, but if you went back to Survivor now, as it is, do you think your strategy or your gameplay would be effective? He says, no, it, it really wouldn't because the game is too complicated. They introduce too many new things into the game on almost a weekly basis. And I said, yeah, I would agree with that. Definitely, I would agree with that because it's not like it used to be. You know, it used to be, you know, the old Survivor was a microcosm of the real world. Very cutthroat. Some of you might say, well, I don't believe that you should always have to outwit, outlast, and outplay everybody. But you kind of do in the real world. And, and people really show their true colors on there, to, what, they, what they will do to win, especially the higher the stakes are. They'll be willing to lie to bribe, to manipulate, and real life is kind of like that. You don't have to do it that way. I thought Ethan played a, played a, a, a I, th I thought he played the game with a lot of integrity, because he wasn't as much like that. It was pretty much straightforward, but 
Maybe I'm remembering wrong. I don't know. I need to go back and watch that season. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's not so much a microcosm of the real world anymore. It's just so game showy now. And none of the three of them even like Survivor anymore. They say it's too woke, which is exactly why I stopped watching it several seasons ago. Yeah, several seasons ago. Because they, you know, Jeff started asking them at the, at the very first game that they were, the very first challenge they were playing, oh, should we have a discussion about the pronouns we're going to use? Now, this was not something that was brought up by the players or the contestants. Not at all. That was Jeff's doing. And you could tell by the looks on their faces, it would have never been brought up if he hadn't have, uh, have initiated it. And immediately right there, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this. And so he's kind of, they, you know, they would agree that he's kind of made the show go down. Hopefully, the old survivor will come back. I kind of doubt it. If it doesn't, it's probably it's probably on life support. I don't know. I don't know. But believe it or not, I actually had hopes of getting on that show. Some years ago, I'd say, let me guess, seven or eight years ago. I'd have to look. I'd have to go back to my Facebook memories to check it out. I actually auditioned for Survivor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to the Hard Rock Cafe. Now, this was after Palau. If you are if you watch Survivor and you keep up with it, you'll know what I'm talking about. This was after Palau. This is after Tom, the firefighter, and Stephanie, who was my Survivor crush, by the way. I love Stephanie. Yes, I do. Anyway, moving on. It was after that season when I auditioned for the next one, which the next season was actually probably already being filmed, but so it would have been like two seasons after, two seasons after that. I think it might have ended up in Honduras or something like that, Nicaragua, I'm not sure. But uh, I was not, ha I had planned on going, I was not having a good day that day. I can't remember, it might have, my wife and I might have been arguing and I was in a sour, I can't remember what it was, it might not have been that. And she told me, you need to go anyway, just go anyway. So I went, glad I did. I had a lot of fun. It was very interesting. It's not something I'd want to do over and over and over again, but it was interesting. You know, people try extremely hard to stand out, so they will pretty much pull out all the stops and do the craziest things. And you think to yourself, this can't be who they are in real life all the time, but obviously it's kind of who they really are. There was an older woman there's an older woman who, she wasn't even auditioning at that point. We were just all in a huge room, one of these huge rooms, just stacked, you know, just people everywhere, sitting down, waiting for, waiting to be called in. And she was getting up and she had a purple, like, jumpsuit on, not a jumpsuit, but like, I don't know, a one piece, like a one piece bathing suit. And she was acting like she was stripping down. And then, I can't remember, but there's all sorts of people doing weird things because they weren't even going to wait until they got into the audition to try to make a mark in someone's memory. They wanted to be so well liked. I mean, it was it was a place for narcissists if I ever saw one. And, you know, you'd see guys go in there and they do like kata or they do a lot of push-ups for the camera. I'm like, what is that doing? What? Why would anybody choose you based on the fact that you could do a lot of push-ups or you could flex your muscles? I don't know, but people were weird and they just want to stand out. I didn't do any of that. I just talked. I just talked. And you know what? I thought I was getting on that show because somebody, I don't know if they were from CBS, I kind of gathered they were, or somebody from in production somewhere, I don't know, within the layers of all of it, had pulled me aside and walked around with me for a while in the lobby or you know the inside of Hard Rock Cafe or Hard Rock Casino and asked me a lot of questions you know really kind of grilled me on a lot of things and so I thought I'm this guy is taking me seriously I might be in and I had a really good feeling about it I checked with work I said hey what, what if I took off 40 days you know or more when I still have a job and I got back and they're like well maybe we might be able to work it out 
I might, might be able to work it out. <laughs> so anyway, it, it never happened. I never got picked. And I was, I was honestly, I was a little surprised. Not that I think I'm all that. It's just that the impression or the feeling I got from that encounter uh, had me thinking that I might've had a, a fighting chance. So I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. It was just a great experience. And believe it or not, when I was there, I saw somebody there I knew, and it was somebody from the company that I worked for, and he was higher ups. He was, he was one of the higher ups in our company. And I had called in sick to do this. I don't know how he did it, but um, we were kind of laughing at the fact that we bo were both there under those circumstances. And I think some months later, he died of brain cancer. But I often think that I don't think I would have lasted very well on Survivor. I definitely wouldn't now. I wouldn't even want to go on Survivor now. Um, Survivor back then was a little more raw, a little more straightforward, a little bit grittier. Now it's kind of like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of stupid. I started watching it again here recently. Uh, but yeah, I still don't think, I still think I would want to be on it now. I, I just wouldn't last long on it anyway. But it was interesting going to this watch party and listening to them talk and relay their experiences on the show and how they prepared for the show once they heard that they were going to be on and what, what kind of clothes they had to go out and buy and what that vetting process was like. And, you know, things like people would ask all sorts of questions like, how did you use the bathroom? My question to them was, my question to Ethan was, how long did it take you to assimilate to the cameras being on you 100% of the time? Because I, my understanding is that they are. I said, it appears that you you contestants um, are very comfortable with it. He says, well, you know, after a while, you just don't notice them anymore. I'm like, I just don't know how you wouldn't notice them. I'm like, like I, I'm sure they're there when you go to the bathroom too. I'm not saying they necessarily but they do follow you. They, I'm not saying they, they, they don't necessarily film you, but they do follow you. And, um, but they're there 100% of the time. So I always wonder like what, what kind of goofy, what kind of goofy a B clip would they get of me? You know, cause you always see these clips. They people, you do not look your best when you're on that show. Like it would be humbling to say the least. And people would, would see the worst side of you. I'm sure. So it would be hard to play that game and come back with a repu reputation completely intact. But so goes life. And that was my that was my um, story of how I got to meet Ethan Zahn. And um, oh oh, by the way, he was doing this to raise money for charity because he's involved. He has his own charity uh, where it, it, it involves soccer and kid. I don't know all this stuff. I don't know much about it. But here's the here's the kicker. So he said, one of the reasons I'm also doing this here is because my wife and I, and she's very pretty, by the way, my wife and I, uh, we, we recently moved to Bartow. I'm like, I asked him about it after it was all over. I said, I can't believe you moved here. He goes, oh yeah, we're, and he told me kind of where they live. I, I'm like, we're five minutes away from you. Now, I didn't ask if we could be friends like that because I would never do that. That would probably never happen. But I did ask him. I said, hey, I got this idea. What if I did a live stream with you or maybe a recorded interview with you? Maybe people would like to see that. And he said, I'm always open. So he gave me his email address. And um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it happens. If you watch Survivor, uh, tell me who your favorite contestant was. What was your favorite season? and whether you like the old Survivor or the new Survivor better. For me, it's the old Survivor I, I like the most. I, I gotta get going. I have an appointment here where I'm at. I'm at BioLife. Oh, by the way, if you wanna know what I have on my beard today, I'm wearing Bay Rum Beard Oil from Artius Man. And also Bay Rum Beard Butter. I thought I had some beard balm left, but I, apparently I don't. But I can save you 20% on all the products. I've been using Artie's Man for a long time. They're really good beard products. But that's what I have my beard today. Bay Rum, Beard Oil and Beard Butter by Artie's Man. All right, guys, like the video. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share it with other people. Um, consider supporting the channel. All these links are down below, okay? 
So thanks for listening to me. I'll catch you in the next one. In the meantime, be wise. Thank you.